Welcome to the Texas Instruments Debug Server Scripting webinar. I am Ki Su Lee, a CoCompose Studio Applications Engineer. Today, I will be talking about Debug Server Scripting, a feature of CoCompose Studio that allows you to control the debugger from the command line using a script or application. For those of you who are new to TI's embedded software and tools ecosystem, it is an area that TI has invested heavily in over the years. The ecosystem is comprised of runtime software, including real-time operating systems like TI RTOS, Embedded Linux, and a multitude of software packages. There are development tools, including the CoCompose Studio Integrated Development Environment, JTAG emulators, and development boards such as launchpads and evaluation modules. On top of this, there is a rich community providing expertise, turnkey solutions, pr product support, and training. Debug Server Scripting, or DSS for short, is basically a set of Java APIs into the CCS Debug Engine. It is possible to control most of the key functionality of the debugger by calling these APIs from a script or program. Because of this, DSS is an excellent utility to automate testing and benchmarking of applications normally run with the CCS debugger. DSS can be used with a variety of languages with the key requirement being the ability to be able to interface with Java APIs. Some languages that can be used with DSS are JavaScript, which is the default language supported out of the box by DSS. Perl, by using the inline Java Perl module to allow Perl to call Java APIs. Python, by using Jython, a Java Im implementation of Python. And Tickle, by using a Java implementation of Tickle, such as Jackal slash TickleBlend. Basically, if the language can interface to Java APIs, it should be able to be used with DSS. However, we strongly encourage using standard JavaScript with DSS. This is because this is the official supported language of DSS, and the only language that will work right out of the box with no additional software needed. All the examples that come with DSS are in JavaScript, and additional out-of-the-box functionality like a script, script debugger is available if you use JavaScript. All DSS examples shown in this webinar will be JavaScript examples. Now let's take a look at a simplified graphical overview of how DSS fits within the CCS environment. First, we have the debug server which provides target debug functionality of CCS, such as target execution, memory access, setting breakpoints, and so forth. The CCS GUI interfaces to the debug server, which gives a control and access to the target. There is also a layer that sits on top of the debug server. This layer exposes a set of Java APIs that allow scripts and programs run from the command lines to make calls to the debug server. This is essentially DSS. Hence, both the CCS Eclipse-based GUI and DSS interface to the same debug engine. There are a great many DSS APIs available that provide various debug functionality. The full list of DSS APIs can be viewed from the DSS API documentation, which comes with the installation of DSS. A list of all classes me and methods can be found, in addition to descriptions for both, and also many examples. Being able to generate a log of your automated test or benchmarking session is crucial not only to view the results of your session, but also to be able to see where failures occurred in either the script or application, or both. DSS can generate very detailed logs of a debug session. Generated logs will be in an XML format. This makes the logs very easy to parse. It also allows you to custom format the logs for easy viewing in your web browser using XML style sheets. Here is the same XML file opened in a web browser, using the contents in the XML style sheet to format the information in a much more eye-friendly way. We can easily see sequence numbers, cumulative times, and times between each action, the actions being done, and any related messages. All DSS APIs can throw Java exceptions. 
Hence, if there is some error with using the DSS API, an exception is thrown, and you can catch the exception and handle it. A Java try catch block can be used to catch and handle exceptions. Take advantage of exception handling to make your scripts more robust and less prone to prematurely failing. Now let's take a look at what a basic example DSS JavaScript looks like. This part of the script simply imports some Java packages and then creates some variables for the various paths and files that will be used in the script, including the target configuration file, the program to load, and the name of the log file to be generated. Then the DSS session is started with the scripting environment that instance call. Next is the call to start logging. Note that the file and path name to the default XML style sheet is also passed into the call, since we want to have the log file reference the XML style sheet when opened in a browser. On this slide, the second part of the script, we have calls to configure the amount of messages passed to the, to the log and also the console. Minimal information will be sent to the console, while all messages will be sent to the log. Once logging is enabled, the scripting session messages can be written to the log and console using an API called TraceWrite. Think of it as a printf for DSS. Next, the debug server is configured for a specific target and emulator by passing in a pre-existing target configuration file. Then a debug session for that target is started. Once the debug session has started, the script will connect to the target, then load a program, and run the target. And finally, the last part of the script will terminate the debugger and disable logging before exiting the script. DSS JavaScripts can be run by using the DSS shell script provided with the DSS installation. This shell script is needed to set up the host environment to start and run a DSS session. After the shell script configures the environment, it will then execute the JavaScript. Note that the DSS shell script has an optional parameter, dss.debug, that can be used. This will run the JavaScript in a JavaScript debugger. The Rhino debugger is a JavaScript debugger that comes with DSS. Basic debug functionality like source stepping, breakpoints, viewing script variables, and so forth is available. It is very useful in trying to debug errors in the JavaScript itself. DSS comes with a useful example called LoadTI. It functions as a generic command line loader, which can load and run any program on any TI target supported by CCS. It was meant to be an example to showcase many of the features of DSS. However, because of the flexibility of the script, since you can pass in a target configuration file and program file to use, many customers simply use load TI out of the box with no modifications. Other built-in functionality is logging, benchmarking, passing arguments to main, resetting the target before execution, memory accesses, and so forth. As a simple loader, many find it very effective as is. There is a feature in CCS called the scripting console. The scripting console is a window in CCS which allows users to specify commands to CCS through a console. It is a JavaScript shell which will create a DSS scripting environment instance when it is opened. This allows users to call DSS APIs from the console as a form of interactive scripting. Full DSS scripts can also be run straight from the console. The scripting console also supports a set of built-in console commands more commonly, uh, for more commonly used functionality within CCS. These console commands are JavaScript functions contained in JavaScript files that are automatically loaded by the scripting console when opened. Most of these JavaScript functions simply wrap DSS calls underneath to make it easier to automate actions with a single short command. Pressing tab in the scripting console will display a list of supported commands. Now let's take a look at DSS in action. Open in my editor, I have an example DSS JavaScript. 
This example is quite simple. It simply will start a debug session for a simulator target. Set a pair of breakpoints, one at the entry point of main and the other at the entry point of another function called read next data. Afterwards, it will uh, run the target and each time it reaches a breakpoint, it will make sure that it reached the proper breakpoint. So the first time it uh, first breakpoint it should reach is uh, main, so it'll check the program counter and make sure that it's uh, uh, at the correct location at the beginning of main. And then, if it is, it'll say it was successful, and then continue on to the next breakpoint. And again, it will make sure it reached the second breakpoint properly by checking the PC and, and matching it up with um, uh, the address of the symbol that it's supposed to be at, at the, the, where the breakpoint is set. And once it successfully reaches the second breakpoint, it will say everything was successful and it will simply shut down the debug session and terminate the script. So let's uh, open up a DOS command window to run our script. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add the location of the DSS shell script to my system path. So I'm going to now run my script by just typing in DSS and then break points to oops typo there points to dot js and let's run this script and you can see that my script ran and there is some um, messages coming from the script saying that it successfully halted at the first breakpoint and then it ran on to the second one and then here's the second message that came um, saying that it su uh, successfully halted at the second location the test was successful and the script uh, the debug session terminated and the, the script session also terminated now let's take a look at um, one of the things that the script did as we can see is that here is that um, uh, logging was enabled, and the log name is breakpoints test log.xml, and the style sheet was referenced. So let's actually open up that um, generated log in a web browser. And here it is. And this should open up the log in a web browser, and here it is. It opened up in my other screen here. So you can see that. Um, It shows quite a bit of information. It shows the total execution time of the script, which is about 1.3 seconds. And you can see there's um, the sequence numbers, uh, basically how long it took to um, execute each step, uh, you know, what message was called, and, and me a message in regards to uh, you know, what, a what action was being done and any messages from the, the debugger. Now let's rerun the script, but let's actually run it from the Rhino debugger. And here it is. So let's expand this a little bit so we can see a bit more. I'm going to configure things around so that I'm going to also open a console here, kind of put it side by side. And as you can see that um, our script is opened um, inside this debugger and we can single step through the code, we can see, or single step through the script, and we can see um, uh, all the script variables here and the values of them. Um, you know, we got an array here. So let's I can set breakpoints. I can say set a breakpoint here, run to it. I can continue to let's minimize this a bit, bit more here. Okay, I can. Okay, here we go. Let's better step over. I'm loading a program here. I mean, uh, setting my breakpoints. Let's reset the target. 
Uh, let's get the value of the PC. You can see that um, message, the success message using the trace write call API. Uh, it'll send it out to the console here. And I can simply run the script and it will run and then because the debug session is terminated um, the, the, the debugger will get shut down. Now for the last part of the demo we're going to run this script from within CCS. So I have my CCS instance running here and I'm going to launch the scripting console where I can run my DSS scripts from. Now there's a console command called loadjs file and using this command I can pass in the full pass and the script name of the script that I would like to run and it will run it from within CCS and you can actually see the CCS uh, GUI automate the steps in the script. Now before I actually run it I want to make one change to our script and here you can see after it reaches the second breakpoint it says it's su successful it terminates the debug session now the script's going to run so quickly that you're barely going to be able to see the action before the debug session is terminated and uh, we won't be able to see anything anymore. So I'm going to comment out these two commands that shut down the debug session and stop the debug server so that the script will run to completion but the debug session will still be uh, left running so that we can actually see that the script um, ran successfully. So let's save that file. Now let's bring up CCS again. Now let's run this script. There you can see CCS is, um, you know, it starts a debug session. The script will start the debug session. It started the debug session for the um, 40 simulator. It loaded our program. It's actually at that second breakpoint that read next data. and uh, in, inside the source file and then the script actually finished execution but because we didn't shut down the debug session or stop the debug server in a script you can see that the debugger is, uh, is left running with the last state of the script. So this is a nice way of being able to uh, see your script run from within CCS making sure it's you know doing all the right actions and also sometimes you can do it so that you can if you want to automate your environment so that you want to uh, automate some steps up to a certain point and then and then let the script run uh, to completion uh, but without terminating the debug session so that from uh, so that now you're ready to continue some additional debug from within CCS so, so DSS can also be used as a way to kind of start and set up your debug session uh, um, you know do some initialization for you run to a certain point in your code and um, and set some breakpoints so that that when you are ready to debug it's all set up for you so this so this is the end of the demo I hope you found uh, both the demo and the presentation very useful and uh, see the value of DSS uh, for your automation needs. For more information on DSS, please refer to the DSS MediaWiki article, the DSS API documentation, and the DSS training material. Links to all of these are shown in this slide.